Hey, it's Brett Graham with Graham's Lawn Care back here for part two. This is our mowing 2021 lawn care setup. Check it out. We got our truck carriage, what pulls our trailer, our seven by 12 box trailer here. We got our blower box. Everything can lock and be kept safe. We have our echo backpack blower. Uh, there's a steel backpack blower that isn't in here right now, but that we use steel handheld and then our echo handheld. Uh, in order to be faster, we'd like to throw a blower on our back. Operate it with one hand and then hold the other handheld blower like this. So you need two backpack blowers, two push blowers, and you can have two guys each holding two blowers a piece, getting a whole lot of power down. Um, and it's the fastest way to blow. Get all the grass out of the cracks, make sure you do the job properly. We've got our edger here, edger slash weed eater. This is pretty interesting. Not a lot of companies run it like this, but this is our Echo SRM. 3020 weed eater and the reason we use the most powerful echo is because we have this thing on the end here called the Edgic Pro. It's a disc and it looks finicky but I promise it's not. It allows you to edge properly, get really clean edges and it's basically just as you run this sticks in the edge and the weed eater is a much more powerful and much more reliable source of edging than an edge blade is because edge blades go down change they're expensive and they don't last as long as weed eater string and in some cases they're not as powerful given the right edger versus the most powerful weed eater here with this custom uh not custom but this commercial husqvarna black trimmer string this is what i recommend uh, i think it's husqvarna uh, it's like a diamond shape so it's a little sharper i've noticed that this stuff compared to echo's orange stuff just lasts way longer it's tougher it's stronger and it gets a better cut up here we've got our our traditional weed eater. It's a straight weed eater. There's no edging with this. And it's our steel product. It's, it's steel's most powerful weed eater, but it's a brake action. So we paid a little more to get the brake action here because in part uh, part three and part yeah in part three you'll see how we use this weed eater for landscaping. We've got two um, attachments that go on here that help us with landscaping. We've got a tiller and we've got a tree trimmer. So catch us in part three and see how we utilize this. But this is our mode setup. We use this for edging and weed eating. So at any point while you're edging, if somebody misses spot weed eating or there's some part where you don't want to run the weed to buy there because it's a waste of time and it's faster, just be edging, stop weeding, and then keep going. This is the option. It's the most efficient and it's the cheapest because it refills mm -hmm. our weed eater string, not edger blades. Up here, we've got our right standard B. It's not the intensity like I wanted, the more expensive version, but it's the, uh, I guess the in-between commercial version. Uh, we all gotta start somewhere, right? So it's our right standard B, fancy cup holder. I live and die by this mower. I love it. So much better than the last year turn I had. I bought that one new. I bought this one new, um, financed it, and I was able to pay it off in like two months, $7,000 and pay for it off so quick. So right standard B, great product. The only thing that holds it back is it doesn't come stock with a trailer hitch. Like I mentioned in part one, we're gonna have to weld something on here. It's gonna be finicky, and then I'm gonna step in the middle of it with it behind my calves. That just makes me nervous, so. We walk over here, we've got our push mower. In our current setup, we only run one push mower, but it's smart to have, even if you only run one, it's smart to have two on the trailer as a backup. If you run two, it's smart to have three on the trailer as a backup, but I'm an idiot, so. Uh, anyway, it's a new mower, it's probably not gonna break, so we just run one for now, but if it starts messing up, we'll get a, we'll get a backup going, but so far it hasn't ever really given us any problems. Honda's super reliable. We just throw it on here, strap it down to prevent it from sliding to the back of the trailer as we drive. Pull up to the property, undo the strap, she's ready to roll. Bags are easy to tie on. You need to bag your grass, bag your leaves, or anything, you just tie your bags, put them in a U. You can see this on TikTok as well, I show you how to do this. Throw it in a U. Take both ends, pull it through, and your bags are on, and they can be grabbed quickly by just grabbing that top part. They're real easy to do. This is how I recommend putting your bags on. Don't tie them on any other way. You just grab them and dump them. They're uh, 55 gallon contractor bags from Home Depot. They don't have drawstrings. You just tie them, double knot them. That's what I recommend. Super reliable and hard to rip. Uh, I always run a trash can just to put the bags in to help with weed control, uh, not weed control, uh, leaf gathering, things like that. If we have to rake a lot of leaves, you can throw them in the trash can. It's easier to dump mower grass in a trash can that has that's bagged than it is to just dump it in a regular bag. I usually keep my five gallon gas tank in here for my zero turn and my mower just to prevent the trash can from flying around. And then right up here at the front of the trailer, you'll notice we have our tarps. So if you'll follow me over here. We've got our tarps here. So 
So I always like to have two because this one's pretty ripped up and it could be destroyed at any moment. And our expensive one from site one. We always have these on us in case there's any leaves or anything. Rake them onto the tarp, pick them up, throw them on the trailer, or tie your tarp off into like a taco and put it in the space between your spray rig and the bed of your truck. Great solution, way faster than a wheelbarrow, way faster than bagging with traditional contractor bags using any sort of trash can or any other bagging system with the mower. Keep it simple, stupid. This is our <laughs> mowing setup. This is how we're gonna run it in 2020. Real excited for the season to start with our spring starters in April. So stay tuned and follow us through the mowing season. All right, so we're here at OnQ. Uh, I've got my tire gauge here, my slime tire gauge. I love this one. Uh, it's not like the most entry level, but it's kind of like a medium quality. And I don't know, it's just gonna last a while and it gives me a lot of good information. We've got the air, air pressure here. One of our tires is flat and the other one's a little low. So we're gonna get them up to their proper PSI. So the right standard B, 36 inch deck. It's 24 PSI is what they recommend that the tires get the best cut. So we're gonna get them filled up, fill, uh, mix our, our gas for our two stroke equipment, fill up our five gallon in the zero turn, and then uh, go buy our, our quote property, take a look, get our information, see what we're gonna charge them, and then we'll hit our commercial property. We, filled, we overfilled it a little bit, our pressure's a little too high. So to avoid any uh, O-ring damage or damaging our tires, I'm just gonna bleed it a little bit by putting the, the point of this on there and letting air escape until the gauge reads 24. Right at about 24, we're good. Prevent leakage. And I will continue to watch the status of this tire overnight and tomorrow. And if we see any significant pressure decrease, uh, we're gonna check it for holes and then we may end up having to slime this tire to prevent it from going flat every night. All right, so we put 2.6 fluid ounces of our high quality commercial uh, two-stroke oil into our gas can. And then we're gonna put two gallons of 89 no ethanol. And it properly lubricates the piston of your two-stroke equipment and this prevents it from seizing up as you saw in some of the videos before when we fixed that echo backpack blower. So I'll just watch here. I'll do two gallons, 2.6 fluid ounces of oil for every two gallons. And then once it hits two gallons, we'll mix it a little bit and then let it ride on the trailer. And by the time we get there, she'll be all mixed up. Because we put the oil in first, now when I fill the gas up on top of it, it automatically mixes it all together. Shake it up, get her mixed. She'll ride, and now she'll power our two-stroke equipment. We're just waiting on Ashton to do our second transaction inside, so I can change to 87 no ethanol for our mower gas. So uh, once we get our 20 thrown down inside, we'll uh, fill up our zero turn and fill up our five gallon tank. And that'll be good for the push mower and the zero turn. For our five gallon is full. Zero turn is going to last you all day or even two days. Mm -hmm. Like 20 or 30 residential yards until you're out of gas. Mm -hmm. 